Hey, Mish, thank you so much for having me today to look at everything. Um, not at all, Panda. Um, thank you very much for coming to have a look. Um, no, not at all. So this not is my studio. Um, Grill. Come on in. Have a look. Uh, you have to excuse this one. We've got mold breaking going on today. It's all right. Um, it's absolutely fine. So it's all a bit stinky. Come on in after you. Okay, thank you. So um, this is James and Jay, um, uh, mold makers from Lockbun Foundry, who are, uh, I've just finished doing two monumental hairs. Uh, so this hair uh, actually goes on top of this one, so it's about 11 foot high when it's finished. Wow. Um, and what we're doing as part of the lost wax process of uh, making a, a mold, uh, which uh, gives you your negative, which I'll explain in a second. Yeah. So basically in here I do all my sculpting, uh, tend to do it over here. Yeah. Um, uh, the simple equipment is uh, lots of steel. <clears throat> so the steel gets used to make an armature and that has to take the weight of the clay. So you, can, <laughs> you basically make a skeleton. Yeah. Um, and then the, the wire skeleton, you then build your clay up on. Uh, and that gives you your uh, positive original. Should I talk okay. you through the process? Yes, maybe talk us through the process now actually. And we'll try and do it quite short and brief because okay. it gets okay. quite lengthy. <laughs> so, uh, positive original, yeah. made out of clay, uh, and then you make a silicon rubber mold to make a negative. So that white rubber you can see on yeah. the hairs uh, looks, looks like this. So when that gets pulled off the hairs, you, you pull off the um, the floppy silicon rubber yes. that picks up all the detail and night yeah. marks. Um, and because it's floppy, it fits into a, a, a rigid fiberglass case, which is what Amazing. James and Jay are making at the moment. Okay. Um, and, and can I just ask, what stage are, are you through um, these hairs? So the hairs are, they're now being molded. Yeah. Uh, so we're at, we're at stage two. So we've made the positive original. Yes. And then making the negative mold. And so, how, but how long did it take you to get to that uh, process? That I mean, has how long taken, has it taken so far? It's probably taken two months. Two months, okay. So I work from a, um, uh, a dead hair. Yeah. And it, uh, it's at a scale of one to 3.4. Right. Uh, yeah. Which puts a hair at sort of um, a human scale. So yes. that each hair is roughly six foot. Wow. Um, so when you've made your mold, the mold comes apart um, in lots of different sections um, and you paint it up with a layer of really hot wax, um, put the two halves of your mold together, which should fit with sort of millimeter precision yeah. to give you a negative. Yes. But then you fill the mold up with wax. To give you the positive. To give you a positive, a bit like making chocolate Easter eggs. Uh, and then out of the mold um, comes your um, your wax wow. positive. So you've gone from a negative orig uh, positive original, yeah. negative mold, yeah. positive wax. The wax gets covered in ceramic to make a ceramic negative. Yes. Because uh, um, when you melt the wax out, it gives you the ceramic negative, hence the term lost wax. Mm. And then you melt your bronze uh, to, uh, it's about 1160 degrees. Wow. Pour it into the mold where the wax was uh, to go back to a positive. Incredible. I feel like I've learned a lot in the last two minutes. <laughs> I totally got it. Uh, so, uh, positive original, yeah. negative mould, yeah. positive wax, yeah. negative ceramic, positive bronze. Wow, brilliant. Thank and you. And it's a process that hasn't really changed uh, in about 6,000 years. It's in amazing. Invented by the Chinese. So I've got Very a few sort of finished things in here, finished sculptures. Wow, well, look at them. And uh, these uh, sculptures, so when you go and do, you study these animals, do you like to actually st start the process when you're out there in Africa? Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes, or do you do it all from, a lot from life and then photographs? So yeah. most of it's from life. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I make a real point of making most, most of it from life because I think you, you get a much better understanding of what the subject's about. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, even if it's something like a horse, if you actually meet the horse, you you get a feel for it's not just what it looks like, but what's going on in in, in the head. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's the same with um, 
uh, African elephants, um, uh, roe deer, um, all, everything. Mm. Um, at the beginning of lockdown, uh, I'd been working from a life model. And even getting inside a life model's head helps with what your sort of sure. your perception of what yeah. you're making. Um, and also the other thing about uh, working from life is it's fun and it means you can travel. And I, I, yeah. I, I love traveling um, and, and try and very much make that uh, part of my process. I think Absolutely. it authenticates yeah. my perception of the subject. And it, and it must have taken you um, to your travels, must have taken you to some amazing places. Yeah. Have you been, what well, sort of? Um, yeah, so quick, I've been lucky enough. Uh, I've spent uh, lots of time in Africa, mostly yeah. in Kenya, yes. uh, mostly at Lewa, yeah. uh, Lewa Wildlife Conservancy. Um, I've been to India, Antarctica, uh, the Middle East, uh, Russia. Wow. Um, weirdly, haven't been to America. I'm going no. to go and do some North American things. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there is a big wide world out there, which yeah. I'm looking forward to getting into. And have you got anything planned? Um, any trips planned? I suppose no one can plan any trips. Can't plan anything. At the moment, um, I can't get myself to Next year, you're <laughs> hoping you might be going, yeah. I don't know, somewhere. <laughs> I mean, like all of us. Um, uh, yes, is the short answer. I'm supposed to be going to Belgium now. Right. I've got a client over there who's got a, a wild boar in the freezer waiting. Oh, uh, waiting for you. To be right. sculpted life size, yeah. but I can't get there. Um, so North America is on the list. Yeah. Uh, I also want to go and look at um, uh, cattle around the world. Okay. Uh, and goats around the world. Uh, so you know, Kashmir mm. and um, the Alps and all yes. sorts of interesting places. And um, the North America trip could that include might might a grizzly bear or yeah. a big brown bear? Be, um, I think a grizzly um, on the list. You know, you've you've got bison, um, yeah. mountain lion. There's, yeah. there's all sorts of things that uh, would be cool to go and look at. Yeah, and fun. Really fun. Um, really I've got some fun. big ones. Do you want? Do you want to? Should we? Do you want to? Yes. Come, or do you want to have a look at a few more in here? Well, maybe could we have a look at that? I saw something as you walked in. Uh, um, at the octopus. I think that's the octopus, perhaps. <clears throat> um, and uh, is there a particular commission you would say you're particularly proud of? Um, my biggest commission um, was probably the Goodman's Fields Horses uh, yes. for uh, Barclay Homes in London. Um, yes, and that was, uh, that was amazing. Um, um, they gave a really free reign about making them, uh, and I knew nothing about horses. Mm. Um, so the research was, was fun, and we did six different types of horse. Mm. Um, and I researched it quite a lot about what each breed was about. Um, and ended up making six life and a quarter size um, horses. So a 16 hand horse turns into a 20 hand horse. Um, and it, and it, was, it, was a, it was a great commission. It was a challenge for, for everybody involved. Um, you know, Lockburn sculpture, uh, me, uh, uh, the engineering, the lighting, yeah. the fountain. And it, it went on and it won the uh, Public Sculpture and Monuments Association Award for excellence. So that was Fantastic. pretty cool. Um, and how long did the whole pro how long was that process from beginning to end? That with, one, with those, that commission uh, was probably um, so in a normal year I'd use two hundred and fifty kilograms of clay. Yeah. Uh, and on the horses I used six and a half tons in six months. Wow. And it took uh, it took about a year from start to yeah. finish. Very good. So tell us about this octopus. Um, so how, why have you got it in? <laughs> Uh, looks like it's ready for cooking, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> so octopus, um, this is uh, the remains of the original, the positive original, which has now been moulded. Yeah. Um, uh, it's back from the foundry uh, and I'll actually recycle it. I'll, I'll, I'll melt it uh, because the mould is the important part. Yes, you've got um, that now. And it's basically, you know, all, all of these tentacle sections um, uh, when they're all on it's quite a complicated or it's a very complicated thing to mold so yes the easiest way to deal with it was to chop it up um see so and so you and you mold so you molded them all separately yeah their tentacles um uh and this is really back for me to just recycle yeah um yeah and the the, the bronze has now been made um well, i can't wait to see that yeah i'm quite excited it was a it was a it was a commission um uh, halfway through lockdown, um, and I worked from a, I bought a, a 
a frozen octopus. Yeah. Uh, so that was, it's more fun sculpting naked ladies rather than octopus out of the freezer. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not sure. But. Um, <laughs> so, I'm also thinking of, I'm, I, and I've, this I've had digitally scanned. Yes. And I'm thinking of making one into gold, which would be quite fun. Gosh, that'd be yeah. amazing. On a small scale. Well, I'm not sure if I'm brave enough. Um, I'm sure you are. And um, Hamish, did, did you want to become a sculptor from a young age? Um, Is it something you've always wanted to do? Was it want or was it necessity? Um, I okay, um, was never particularly academic. No, um, like the rest of us. <laughs> Lots of friends will be laughing on that one at the moment. <laughs> um, but I had very good art teachers at, at school, yes. and, I, and I've always been, um, I've always enjoyed making things. Yeah. I've been, I'm always, a, I'm a practical person rather than a sort of linguistic person. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, so, so yes, made things from an early age. Yeah. Oh. I had good art teachers at school. Glad you did that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I failed my RTB. I uh, wrote down a grid reference and uh, backwards and bombed at school, so that was <laughs> no. the end of that one. Okay. Um, these are relatively new. Um, Look th at this these. was a, um, a lockdown commission. They are stunning. Absolutely stunning. So they're, um, they're cast uh, into stainless steel, which is a. Um, obviously a much harder material for casting because it, yes. it melts at 1600 degrees. If you try and melt stainless steel in the same pot you melt the bronze in, uh, mm. uh, the furnace melts because oh it's also goodness. made of steel. So Have this... you done many of these in, in, in um, steel? Um, in steel? Uh, I've done, the, the, the ammonites are also cast into stainless. Yes. Um, yeah. And this is the first really complicated one. Looks very complicated. Um, the detail. You know, casting something like this into stainless steel, you, 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 you've got a, it's a much simpler yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas the turtles are massively complicated. Yeah, no, I'm sure. And they were, you know, they were <laughs> cast, each turtle is probably uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bits. And then wow. all hand finished and welded and um, hand polished. And uh, if anyone's ever tried to clean a stainless steel knife, it, it takes a bit of polishing. Yeah. Well, they have to. Well, well, that that will need continued um, sort of uh, maintenance um, and polishing. From it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, it, or... it should. Um, uh, I mean, it it it's marine grade stainless, so it, it, it <laughs> might tarnish a little bit. It might get sort of. It, this one's going to Barbados. Um, I might get a a crusty layer of sort of salt. Yeah. Uh, but nothing. We can't rub off with a cloth. Yeah. Uh, it's also going into a, it's going into a, behind a plunge pool, um, so it's going to be in water, and uh, that will reflect in the stones. Yes. Um, oh, I'm really excited. Look, look unbelievable. Hopefully, you you will be required to go out there to uh, put it in in uh, situ. I, I definitely. Yes. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Most and, important. And I think Laura might need to carry my camera. Then. She, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, Absolutely. So I've got a few other big ones. Um, in here, um, oh, this nice. was um, I did a, a a lion and a lioness. Um, I wanted to do them life size, uh, so went out to Kenya yeah. um, and I made um, a couple of small ones. I did. I, I find by I just put a video to show you. Um, <clears throat> so by by going out to Kenya, um, quite often I work in the back of a Land Rover. Yes. Um, and the, as you can see the lioness in the background. Yeah. And by sculpting from life. Yeah. Um, it gives me a um, it gives me a sort of proper feel about um, what the subject's about. So you've got the mannerisms and, and yeah, just, just by by yeah. observing. So you've got yes. the lioness there, and by by looking, sculpting, photographing, yes. uh, all at the same time, I, I get. The animal into my head mm. um, and then come back <clears throat> and uh, make a life-size one and I obviously can't make a life-size one in the back of a Land Rover. No, no. Um, so I tend to do that so in a sort of do. more controlled uh, studio environment. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so this one's going to be Germany oh, um, with, with, with the male. They're, a, I think they're a pretty amazing animal. They're huge, they really aren't they? are. 
the you've um, captured the face. You can just sort of that look, you know, the eye and absolutely amazing. Yeah, so then there's a, there's a few others. There's a leopard, uh, the bullhead. Bullhead's fantastic. Where's, is the bullhead sold? Uh, no, this one's not sold. Uh, you know, all of these big ones were meant to be in the exhibition mm. last October, which of course um, well, got cancelled. But yeah. Um, yeah, actually, that's been probably quite good that the exhibition's been cancelled. Well, using... you know, every cloud, <laughs> silver lining. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, is, would you say that the certain commission that, that you have found you know, your biggest challenge you found particularly difficult? Um, sculpting people is the hardest one. Yeah. Uh, because uh, people know what people look like. Um, and also, does that person you're sculpting say, no, I don't want my. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, I, I uh, tend to take on commissions which. Because I'm doing it to make a living, I have yes. to take on things which I think I can make, I can sell an addition of. And if I'm doing a portrait of someone's dog or someone's horse or, or yeah. someone's mother, yeah. I'm probably only going to sell one of those. Yes. Whereas if I do a more generic sculpture, You're so this was a commission, to. the turtles were a commission, um, I think I can sell an addition, yeah. Yeah. Which, which makes it, um, I, I think, better yes. from a making a living point of view. Yeah. And are you quite picky about... Um, what what do you sculpt? I mean, or commissions you get asked to do? Do you ever turn down any commissions that um, perhaps your heart's not in? Yeah, I, um, I do. You I mean, know, I, you feel you couldn't, you can't sort of. Uh, yes, I mean, the, I, I think at the beginning of my career, I took on everything that anyone offered. Yes. Uh, in order to make a living, I think as I as I uh, my career goes on, yeah. I, I can be a bit more picky about what I'm doing, and mm. I can also be a bit more adventurous about what I choose to make. Yes. So, so yeah. like the big Ammonite um, cost a fortune to cast and was quite a big risk for me to make, but you, it was something that I wanted to say, make. Yeah. And you yeah. know, as an artist, you get pigeonholed. I've been pigeonholed for doing dynamic wildlife, mm. which is a great pigeonhole to be in. Yeah. But at the same time, I quite Water. like sculpting, uh, you know, the human form and slightly mm. more abstract things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you, would you say that you've ever had it? Have you, what's the biggest cock up? Uh, had a cock up? <laughs> hundreds of cock ups, Panda. <laughs> uh, so, Panda, uh, biggest cock up. Um, I mean, the great thing about bronze casting is if you have a cock up, normally you can rectify you can then, yeah. um, uh, I have made sculptures which I haven't cast because I, I haven't been pleased with how they turned out. So, yeah. you just scrap yeah. them, and yeah. that's part of the learning process. Mm. Um, there's always room for improvement. Um, tricky clients. Tricky clients. Saying yeah. I don't like. Uh, uh, I mean, that's why. Like I, again, that's why I'm quite careful about what I take on. So yeah, of course. If I take on a a, a commission and the client ends up not liking it, I always give the client an option of not going ahead with it. But in order for me to take it on in the first place, I would have thought to myself, yeah, this is one that I can I can sell. So at the end of the day. I very much want to do what a client wants, but if yes. it doesn't work, I'm quite happy taking it on, on, on my shoulders and having yes. it part of, my, of yeah. my sort of collection. Yeah, okay. If that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, no, 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 it does, it does, yeah. totally. Um, well, I uh, wish I could afford to have a few of these in our garden or house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I haven't, really got, really I haven't got many in my house. You know, that, that's one of the things about bronze casting. It, it is uh, an expensive game. Mm. Um, it's amazing that it hasn't changed at all, the process, in, what did you say, 6,000 yeah. years? I mean, that's, that's incredible. I mean, the only things which yeah. have changed are uh, modern silicon rubbers. So, you know, nowadays you can peel off the mould from around, yeah. around uh, half a section. Yes. Yeah. Whereas in the old days, they would have had to have um, um, uh, plaster sections that would have only come away at 90 degrees to the surface. Okay. So like on a lot of Rodin sculptures, you, you get those lines, mm. I don't know if you ever noticed them, and that's where uh, the different sections of plaster mould would have come okay, right. Whereas nowadays you can just Do peel, peel the whole off. thing. Peel and the whole you know, thing. modern welding has made joining bits of metal together. Mm.
much easier in the old days. They all would have been um, sleeve jointed or cast in one. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely easier, but mm -hmm. it's lovely that it's such an ancient process. Yeah, it's amazing that. Um, and, and do you find that you have to be in a certain uh, headspace to work on a yeah. sculpture? Um, and, you know, a bit like, uh, you know, writer's block. Yeah. You know, people uh, just, yeah, just not time. in the right frame of mind to <clears> be doing it. And, you know, you have to just give it a miss that day. I mean, obviously, if you're under time pressure. So I can't get sculpting with a hangover, for one. No hangovers, no. No hangovers, no. Um, uh, which makes me dream uh, the week really boring. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's quite a physical process, so you, yes. you have to be uh, uh, feeling into it. Yes. Um, I've taught myself to, to, to get into the zone, I guess, from doing it for a number of years quite quickly now. Okay. Um, I used to find that it would take me an hour or so just to get to into get the right. Into it, and yeah. if you're thinking about it, it's not working. It's when you're not thinking about it that it's working. Yes, so you're trying to force it, I guess. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and if I'm just having a day where it's just not happening, I'll go and do something really fun, like my VAT return. Oh, God, I bet that would get you back, back <laughs> but, you know, there's in lots here of, pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's lots of other bits to it. There's, there's um, um, I, I do my own photography, so... You know, it's not just no. pushing clay around. No. There's, and there's, I spend a lot of time at the foundry and uh, emailing clients and all that yes. sort of stuff. Yes, yes. And, uh, sorry, where, where is the foundry? So the foundry is uh, Crop Reedy. Okay, say. that's... Crop Reedy. Um, I don't just know. north of Banbury. Yes, I, I um, know, actually. Which is really the reason for um, moving to Crop Yeah. How long does that take you? Um, half an hour? Yeah, half an hour. And they're a really great team. So I, I was backed by the foundry when I first started. Yeah. Uh, when they were in London, um, and uh, we've all grown up together and we're all going great together. And, and they're, you know, they produce really good quality bronzes. Which and the relationship for a sculptor and the foundry is a really crucial one. Yeah. No, I'm sure it must be. Uh, and and can you just briefly talk us through uh, a typical day with your Get up at half past oh. 11, um, <laughs> open a glass of wine at about five o'clock. <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah. sort of typical day, um, uh, I tend to head out to my office at, at about eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, I, normally, I normally do all my emails. I, I like to have a clear head when I'm going yes. to sculpting, so I tend to do all the sort of office stuff first. Um, and then I, I normally work until about um, six o'clock or something. Yeah. Uh, but you know the great thing about being self-employed is if I want to go up to Scotland for a week, you know I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's up to me to uh, structure my time. And your guys, um, are they here every day? Uh, no, uh, uh, we could head back to my studio. So, okay. so uh, normally, uh, uh, normally mold making would happen at the foundry. I'd normally yeah. take um, um, the original to the foundry. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but because this is so big, this would sort of fall over uh, and probably yes. destroy itself, getting itself to the foundry. Yeah, I also actually can't get it out of the door yeah. uh, until I take it apart. Um, so uh, and, and the moving of these things, I mean, that must be pretty bit of a headache, but you've probably got it down to a fine art now. Um, yeah, so I mean, so sort of, how, do you, how do you get it to the drive? So the um, so I can get a lorry around to here, okay. um, oh, and I have a uh, the yellow tractor um, in my shed will mm. we'll pick up most of the things I'm currently making. Um, in terms of uh, transport to exhibitions, a lot of the big ones is just a crane lorry. Yeah, uh, and I, I I really only use about three companies who, who just they know what they're doing, trust. Uh, who I trust. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the logistics of moving. Um, heavy lumps of metal around us yeah. can be interesting and I'm shipping sure. is another one you know so stuff yeah. goes all yeah, over the place to, yeah. um, so those turtles they'll go they'll be crated and, 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 and flown flown um, yeah. gosh look at this oh just fantastic so there's, there's there actually there's only a few more but um, we've been having a really good couple of months and lots of stuff's been selling great Pleased to is say. This a, is this a particular uh, lady up here? Uh, uh, no, that was, well, it is a particular lady. Uh, 
That's actually rather an old sculpture I did a few years ago. Um, there's, there's, I quite like this one. Uh, I quite like that because it could be really old, um, but, but isn't. Um, so interestingly, made out of mud. Yeah. As was the rhino. Yeah. Um, I quite like the sort of. Uh, uh, I hate the word, but juxtaposition of using mud to make something yes. that is beautiful. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. And also Absolutely. I love the fact that with bronze casting you can pick up um, all of the fingerprints and the knife marks mm -hmm. and uh, mud gives it a degree of randomness which yeah. uh, working in other materials like uh, plaster seems don't give you. So no. during lockdown I did um, three cheetahs. Uh, this one I made out of clay. And then um, this one I made out of plasticine, and then the third one I made out of mud. Um, and I oh, wow. really just to sort of see how the, the the three different materials, which I've used all my career, so work. Yes. I've never done it as a comparison. Which one did you enjoy working? What do you enjoy uh, working with? Clay is the quickest. Yeah. And I work with quite a wet clay. Yeah. Um, which I like. Plasticine is great in a hot environment. So if you're in Africa, you can't yes. think about working with clay. You have to work with something that doesn't dry out. Yeah. Um, um, mud, I just quite like working mud just because it's mud. Mud. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, uh, shall I show you my mud? Do you want to see my mud? Yes, yes. Let's quickly see your mud. Um, so it's literally dug straight out of the ground. Um, so is there a certain mud that is, is better, like yeah, uh, it's limestone not really a mud. It's actually, or it, clay? It's a, it's a natural uh, clay. So it's actually quite a good natural clay, dug up very locally to here, dug up in Wigington. Mm, um, local so clay. So it, it is actually clay. Yeah. But it, it you know, it has got stones and things. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, so there we um, go. Hamish, thank you so, so much. That's really fascinating um, and just great to see everything and see everything in action. I can't wait to see these hairs. Oh, Panda, thank and you. And the turtles. Thank you for um, coming to have a look. No, well, thank you very much for, um, for having us. Not at all. Great. Thanks. Thank you.